is my first proper visit to Wales, and obviously I'm learning about food, and I didn't know Welsh beef was a thing. Yeah, they've been around for thousands and thousands of years. And the Romans used to call them Ayr. I was just thinking, like, maybe I've got it wrong. Maybe I need, like, a farmer boyfriend. Certainly from a farming perspective, you can't really... When he picked me up, just scooped me up to put me on the cow, I was like, oh, this is cool, this is normal, I can do this. Wales has a reputation for having more sheep than people, a formidable language, and for giving us some of the world's best singers. And if you're anything like me, when you think of Wales, good food isn't necessarily the first thing that springs to mind. But word on the valley is that Wales is at a gastronomical turning point. Really my favorite thing. <laughs> so I've escaped London to eat and drink my way around the country. How'd you do, Meet the people embracing <laughs> this new image. <laughs> and find out if Wales really could be the UK's best kept culinary secret. <laughs> I'm kicking off my trip in the capital, Cardiff on a day that holds special meaning for the people of Wales. We have to find the front of the parade. St David's Day is the Welsh National Day. St David is their patron saint. Feeling pretty Welsh right now. Oh, thank you everybody for coming. Today is our day. St Patrick has his day. St. George, the guy who didn't exist, they have their day as well. And who better to advise me on the best of Welsh food than some of Wales' biggest cheerleaders? Welsh lamb. My favourite. Welsh lamb from the, from the marshes. Oh, I tell you what. What's this? Uh, that's a leaf. Are you the most patriotic man in Wales? Oh, yes, I've even got Welsh underwear on. I'll uh, take your word for it. You've got lava bread, which is made from seaweed. Lava bread, is it good? Am I going to like it? Yeah, it's lovely. A Welsh lamb and leek curry or any other sort of dish, like a lamb cow. It's like Marmite cow. You yeah. either love it or you'll hate it. Oh, it's beautiful. It's fantastic. No, it's disgusting. Oh, yeah, of course, it's Welsh cakes. Welsh cakes? Welsh cakes? <laughs> um, um, um. I don't know. Oh, yes, um, rabbit. Rabbit, yes, um, which is like cheese on toast, but it's got extra things in it. Welsh rabbit, which is lo 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 it's lovely, lovely. It's the start you off of the day, you end it with that. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Welsh rabbit, something I've heard of, but I'm confused as to where cheese on toast ends and rabbit begins. So I've gone in search of enlightenment, and all roads lead to Tyvey Cheese on Glynhynnod Farm in West Wales. Coming to Wales and not knowing what a Welsh rarebit is has made me feel like a total knob. So I've come to this organic cheese farm to meet a total cheese head called John Savage. How do you do, Charlie? How do you do? Thanks to his uncommon methods, he's produced the most highly awarded cheese in the whole of Britain. It's made with raw milk. It's unpasteurised. Environmental health officers, don't, they don't like it, but provided the milk comes from a healthy animal, breast is best, OK? But the best thing is actually to go inside and see what's happening, OK? Let's do it. Oh, that's a smell. Well, you can smell milk, you know? Don't touch anything. I won't touch anything. It's so funny when you're told that you're not allowed to touch something, you just want to touch anything. <laughs> I won't, don't worry. So this is a cheese vat, but at the moment, what Tim is doing, he's actually stirring the curd. You know, the little white bits, which is the solids in the milk. So when the whey's drained out, you will be left with the curd. I'm swimming in weird cheesy puddles. <laughs> then the curd will be scooped into these cheese molds and we press the cheese. Now that particular cheese is a car filling. The original recipe was made for the miners because it was very moist and it was quite easy to make. You're getting me all fired up about cheese, John. Here you go. Wow. This is the main hard cheese storeroom. 
Here, hold that. Can Are you? you sure? I've washed my hands. It's, it's heavy, isn't it? That cheese weighs eight kilograms. Originally, that would have been 80 litres of liquid milk. You know whose favourite cheese that was? Who? Luciano Pavarotti. John's a born salesman, and I'm ready for the rabbit pitch. Before I came to Wales, I'd heard of a Welsh rabbit, but I didn't shamefully know what it was. But as far as I could tell, it was nothing more complicated than cheese on toast. It's not just cheese on toast. OK. Right, you can make the cheese on toast, and I'll make the Welsh rabbit. And we'll see which we prefer. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> OK? Let's start cooking. We're going to use a mature cheese, really. So this is a medium tivy. It starts off kind of milky, and then it's sort of creamy, and then it's quite mature. This is called Celtic Promise. Oh, wow. You can have a bit more. <laughs> really, <laughs> right, we'll mix that. It. Yeah, we're mixing that. We'll mix that together. Organic whole grain mustard, maybe a little bit of butter, a Welsh beer. What is it? Pale ale. Right, so it starts to bubble with the cheese. The black pepper. Mix that all together. I already feel like I'm being trumped. So I should get on with my recipe now. This is the most fun ever. This is my Welsh rabbit. OK. Where's right. the bread? That's ready now. The bread. Hey, where's the bread? This is proper bread, OK? You don't put Welsh rabbit on... Any on, old bread. ...on that white stuff. OK. Why do they call it a rabbit? What's in a name? Before global warming, the winters in Wales could be quite harsh. I mean, cheese was made during the glut of milk in the summer. The cheese would have been stored in the winter. Obviously, you've got the protein, you've got the bread. It's warm. Let the cheese and toast off begin. We need a drink now. What would you normally drink with Welsh rabbit? Cheese and wine, no? What staring is in the face? Can I try come it? Out, aren't you? Yeah, of course. Right. I can give you a glass, but no, no, you do it like that. Modern woman, you know? <laughs> so that's the rare bit. There you are. Try that. Thank you. Right. Oh, I could get used to this. It's nice and moist. It's so good. Mmm. This is a meal. Before we finish this, we should try my plain old cheese yeah, on toast. Yeah, of course. Let's go for it. Mmm, that's lovely as well. It's lovely because of your cheese. That was so good. But I'm going to abandon this and go back to this. So I finally accept the Welsh rarebit as something superior to cheese on toast. Being wrong about rarebit has left me questioning other preconceptions about Welsh culture, such as rugby. Let's just say I don't get it. But it's a huge deal here. So I'm hoping that by breaking bread with some rugby players, I can find some common ground. And a girls' rugby team in the Rhondda Valley has invited me to try, provided I first prove myself on the pitch. I guess there's no turning back now. Yeah, see how we go. Look at it. It's like being back at school. I feel like I'm about to be bullied. Look at these women. Oh, my God. Hi. <laughs> you ready for this? Yeah, no. Is it hard? Do you want me to light you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah. Does it hurt? Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. The basics of a tackle. So, sorry. Show that bit of it. Have a go. But I'm not a very violent person. This is very against my... Right, well, I'm thinking someone you ate. Sorry, it's a really... Oh, oh. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really hate you. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Look at the state of me. <laughs> my my nervous system shook. <laughs> I can't hear anything. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Inside, I'm dying. Luckily, next up is one drill that I was built for. Joe, nice and straight. Yeah. And then there are one, two, three. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> it's mine! Yay! Yay! 
That was intense. That kind of was a bit much for me, but I'm still here. <laughs> Now an honorary member of the team and starving hungry, it's back to the clubhouse to fill our boots. What have we got here then? We got Welsh cow. What is cow? Traditional Welsh stew, leek, swede, potato, carrot and Welsh lamb. It's perfect for rugby players. It's perfect, especially after the cold wet It's really nice. Mmm. It's like a watery casserole. <laughs> what is that? What is it? Inside them is potato, lamb with mint. So it's like a Welsh tradition pasty and they call it... Yogi! Yogi, Yogi, Yogi! Oh, oh, yogi originated from the mines. It was a thick crust on the pasty. They used to eat the filling and throw the crust away and shout Oggy. And the rest of the workers shouted Oi to ward off evil spirits, apparently. But uh, that's, that's where the oggy, 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 oi, 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 chant comes from. But the food is not the main event here. It's more of a means to an end. We've got to line our stomachs. Right, your initiation. What's an initiation? Part of the rugby tradition. OK. You either do the board race, which is half a cider, Half of lager, half a beer, <laughs> half a glass of water and a shot, one after each other. Or the other option is, is called a dirty pint, which basically is all, all of, of what we just said in one pint in one go. No, oh, you don't want a dirty pint. Get the bucket. Water, water. <laughs> <laughs> That's not in case I'm sick. England versus Wales. <laughs> We've got this. So we won! We won! No! Yes! <laughs> Am I drunk? I can't tell. I'm fine. Let's do it again. For pudding, you guessed it, another drinking game. The rules of which I clearly don't understand. <laughs> I may be well on my way, but the girls are just getting started. So it's on to the bus and back into Cardiff to watch some rugby with the locals. It turns out I find watching an actual rugby match on TV somewhat boring, so I'm hungry for a distraction. I haven't eaten anything since my oggy and towel, so I need to eat more so that I can drink more. Hiya! Can I please have some Welsh chips? Thank you very much. Rabbit's better on toast. I feel a second wind coming on, so it's time to hit the town and show them how it's done. No, no London, Cardiff, my dad. After a morning and a day and a night out in Cardiff, the ladies insist there's one final stop before bed. Whoa. This is Chippy Alley. Like bikes going on. It looks like lonely, drunken girls. People flock to this fast food mecca in search of the holy grail of Welsh drunk food. 
This is the Welsh equivalent of drunk food. It's called chicken curry off the bone half and half, meaning half rice, see, and half chips. Which to me is a marvellous thing. My intro to Wales has filled me with fun, beer and junk food, but it's not what I'd call haute cuisine. I'm still hungry for the hidden gems of Welsh food I've been told are out there, somewhere beyond the city. Is this a Welsh breakfast? It is, 100% Welsh. A good pint. Your boobs. Your boobs, yeah. I'm on a wild goose chase trying to follow three Welshmen as they try to catch fish. I feel like I'm on the set of some Scandinavian horror film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 